I have with me Dr. P. S. V. Rao. He is a consultant surgeon, Manipal Hospital Herbal in Bangalore. Thank you, Dr. Rao, for joining us. And my first question: Why do these deadly stampedes happen in the first place? To you and to all the viewers, I have, first of all, I would like to express my condolences for the 121 who have died and for those who are injured. I hope they recover fast. Secondly, uh, the, everyone is using the term stampede. There is a bit of difference between what a stampede is and what a crowd crush is. A stampede is of the Mexican origin and refers to sudden movement of a huge crowd, uh, herd of animals or a crowd of human beings in any particular direction, but in a vast open area. What we see time and again are actually what is referred to as crowd crush, where in a confined area, and the confined area can be anything. It can be, uh, you may be confined in a burning uh, aeroplane, you may be confined in a metro uh, uh, coach, in a train, in uh, anywhere, or in a hall, or in this a area where they have put barricades and had only one entry exit, if you allow more than five persons, per, I mean, anywhere five or more persons per square meter of a given area, then what happens is the, uh, the congestion, the crowd is so much that each person is in contact with four other people, one in front, one in behind, and the two on the side. So there is a lot of pressure. In this kind of confined space, and I am sure this was far more than five per square meter, uh, what happens is the oxygen levels drop, people get crushed, they are unable to breathe, and often deaths occur due to just asphyxiation. That means they are unable to breathe there. And if one person falls, then uh, there is a gap there, and the people on his side suddenly lose support of that person and more people start falling like a domino effect. And the other problem is, if such a, a vast, uh, dense crowd starts moving in any particular direction, the people in the back of the crowd may move faster and push faster than what the people in the front of the crowd can resist. And then they start falling and others uh, fall over it. Now, uh, Post-mortem of these kind of cases in the past has shown that most of the deaths are due to asphyxiation. That means due to lack of oxygen inability to breathe yes. adequately. And that many times the injuries are uh, caused because of trampling much after the, I mean, after the person has already died. So uh, many times the injuries are post-mortem after death. Now, uh, why, uh, why does this happen? One, you should never have allowed such congestion. If the uh, police and the administration had allowed only 40,000, they should have stopped entry beyond that. If they didn't and they allowed this congestion to occur, you are asking for trouble. And any incident can lead to the whole crowd moving in any direction. It may be a fireworks, it may be fire, it may be anything. And there has to be proper way of managing the crowd and for the crowd to exit. If you remember, yeah. recently in a Japanese airline which caught fire, they were so efficient in, crowd ma in that management that within seconds they had the entire uh, uh, plane evacuated. Now that is what you need to do. And if you remember, uh, we have these huge crowds in various uh, religious events, music events, sports events, and many times confined inside a stadium. You need to be control the number of people inside, and you have to have proper ways of exiting the place. Otherwise, you are asking for trouble. Right. So this also, is there, also you know, there were, there's, there's also been, uh, what has been found out is because it had rained, just 24 hours ago, therefore, uh, it was a slippery surface that the people were walking on. Uh, there was mud. Uh, there was also a manhole that had been built right next to the uh, venue. And there were several people who fell into that ditch and they died over there. Uh, 
likelihood of, like you said, there's uh, asphyxiation because of which people died, they were suffocated, but there were some deaths also where the people had stepped over the others, they got crushed under the weight of the people uh, and people were obviously, you know, stepping out and wanting to get a last glimpse of this person, of this self-styled godman, because of which that entire ruckus that took place. Yes, the avenue has to design is also very important. Crowd management is very important. And nowadays, since we have drones, I, uh, drones can be used to see how the crowd is being, uh, how dense is the crowd, how, what is the crowd doing. All this is important and you can't allow excess people in. Like I said, the number of people safe is about two to three per square meters. Uh, uh, five is dangerous. And often we have far more than five. So this is the very dangerous situation. Yeah. And uh, many times such events occur in a train coach or in a bus uh, when uh, people push around. But what happens is the deaths are only one or two, so it doesn't catch media attention. Here, there are 121 dead, so many people injured. Now that's how it gets media attention. Yeah, but okay. So if there is an incident such as uh, the one that happened unfortunately in Hathiras. Uh, what would be your suggestion as a doctor uh, to you know tackle the situation such as this so that there are minimum number of deaths that take place? We doctors always believe prevention is better than cure. So uh, the best way is to ensure that the venue is safe. This has to be checked beforehand. It's not only when some VVIP is coming and the security checks is done. This has to be done whenever anyone asks for permission for a, um, a mass meeting. That venue needs to be checked. It has to be level ground. There should be, there should be easy a, a, a escape from that. In case, even if you have one entry point, you should have multiple exit points so that people can easily escape outside. And you should never allow congestion beyond a certain extent. This is what I said. The science of crowd management says that anything around five or more per square meter is a very dangerous situation. And nowadays, since we have drones, I feel that also should be looked into. And you should have, uh, you know, for any event, it may not be at this, someone may have a heart attack, someone may have a, any other episode, you should have ambulances ready and you should have at least a medical camp, a temporary medical camp in case you are going to have such a huge crowd yes. with the uh, required people there and helicopter, uh, helipad, if you are going to have massive crowds, you have to have helipad so that you can evacuate an emergency situation to a nearby big hospital. Okay. And also, you know, if a person is stuck, unfortunately, in such a situation, what are the kind of precautions that person can take to save his life? See, uh, if my advice to anyone is if there is a crowd, if it is getting really crowded, please exit or go towards the, slowly work towards the exit and exit and save yourself. Please don't allow a mass mob frenzy to, uh, to uh, uh, affect you also. This we see in music concerts, we see in religious uh, events like here when the crowd was dancing. And we also see it in sports events when there is a mass frenzy. And I'm sure psychologist Dr. Kapil Kastor will talk about it. When you have a mass frenzy, you never know how the mob behaves. So this is something that needs to be controlled because in a frenzy, there will be no logic, no this thing. Everyone will suddenly get all excited or uh, frightened by some fireworks or some uh, event and then run around. And nowadays with all these terrorist incidents around, you have to be very careful because all it needs is one explosion and you will have a stampede yeah. of a crowd like this. Okay.